got a white screen. I think we're good. Yeah. Welcome to episode 10, guys. We made it to episode 10. And uh, we're setting a precedent now. I'm going to have the flu every time we hit a 10th episode, a 10th uh, <laughs> episode 20. I'm going to be very sick as I am now. So um, I'm your DM, Jake Friday, your v viral DM, VDM. VDM. <laughs> no. V no, uh-uh. VDM <laughs> is a, it, it's apt. It works with the whole, it sounds like an STD, but, mm -hmm. uh, which is, I, I feel like if STDs were humans, I, I feel like they would feel the way I do. <laughs> Good I feel, old vaginal dynamite. Love it. Sure. Whatever. <laughs> no. Uh, and uh, we're going to play some D&D &D 5e. We haven't been playing for two weeks because so people are traveling and such. And we'll see how long I make it. Maybe an abbreviated episode. Let's go around the horn and people introduce themselves and social media themselves. That's it. Uh, let's start with Dave. Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, sorry you're feeling sick, Jake. Um, uh, I play a character called Prodding Rod. Proddy for short. I'm a Kenku Warlock. And I'm um, trying to get my wings back. And, um, you know, I'm doing whatever I can to do what a, a young Kenku does to, uh, to help my, uh, my party out. That's about it. I don't really have any social media stuff to plug or any shows or anything. So, Catherine? Point up to Catherine. Oh, I like that I'm a point up because to me, you are a point up, like a real Brady Bunch <laughs> yeah. episode. Um, Hi, my name is Catherine Elise. You can find me. <laughs> you can find me. <laughs> um, you can find me on social media at Catherine, not I R L. That's Catherine K A T H E R I N E, not I R L. Uh, yes, you can also find me on YouTube from Catherine Elise. Uh, you will find my web series, The Fat One, there. Rom com between a chubby girl and herself. And uh, you can also find me very soon, but I don't know when it will be released on Richard's um uh podcast awkward human survival guide in which case we plugged this show <laughs> as an homage to jake oh, for all your hard work and everything you. you do appreciate it my pleasure yes <laughs> so that is me oh i play um aradia night song who is a drow monk um uh elf in case you don't know that drows are elves um mm -mm 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 -mm. she likes to hug that's me I got some rosé. Cool. Uh, Richard. Hi, I'm Richard Cardenas. Um, you can find me all over social media at Le Richard C. Um, I am a podcast host. I host two. One that Catherine just, Catherine just uh, named, which is the <laughs> Awkward Human Survival Guide. And you'll be able to find her episode probably in like a week or two. Uh, and also Interview with a Nerd. Um, I play, ooh. <laughs> we're live, we're live. Hi, Dustin. <laughs> um, I play a character, a triton sorcerer named Nihilus Nymerith, and he just found his sister, and he's very conflicted about that. Uh, yeah, just you're right in the middle of it. And, mm -hmm. uh, you, you're going to be front and center here to begin with. Justin, do you have anything to plug? Uh. I'm filming a cinema special December 6th, I want to say. It's a Ooh. Thursday. Ooh. Cool. Yeah, in Los Angeles. And I need to fill like 162 seats. So uh, if you have a lot of friends, uh, please beg them to come. Uh, Where is it? Where are you filming? Uh, we're still working on the details, but I think it'll be at the Oh My Ribs Theater on Santa Monica. Uh, cool. I, I think we'll do like an 8 p.m. and a 10 p.m. show. So I'll, I'll post more on my website, justmatson.com soon. Ooh. I'll be looking for those comp tickets. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Comps all around. I just want to fill seats. <laughs> all right. Let's get started before my brain melts. Uh, so oh, the wow. group defeated the boarders on the boat as they were making their way to the Isle of Inn in between Innis and Ista and disembarked on the island and passed a few tests including Riddles of the Sphinx from Ranos, which was amazing how good 
Radia <laughs> slash Catherine was at those. I, uh, <laughs> that was like crazy. I just, I still feel dumb from that. <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't even hear the riddles. I like, like, I could. I was. I have a. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, I. It's weirdly like a thing that I do too often. Like I love riddles. I love word puns. I love. Uh, I don't know. I just love it. And it's the, literally the only time it has ever come in handy is this game. So way to go. Well, I love it because I was thinking that was going to take you guys potentially 15, 20 hours. <laughs> and then, she knocked them out. And the previous puzzle room uh, with prestidigitation, I thought that would take like <laughs> 30 minutes. And that... that was just not clear. <laughs> <laughs> that wall was not helping us <laughs> and uh yeah so it's just the joy of being a dm uh mm -hmm. so after getting past those riddles uh ranos took you to the central portion of the island where everyone gathered and you met devomala the other sphinx the sister sphinx and she put you guys in a zone of truth and um and Aradia truthfully fell in love deeply with her right and ranos <laughs> and deva mala seem to have a sibling rivalry and uh what else am i missing yeah i wrote down here in my notes Aradia tried to flirt with deva mala <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh unsuccessfully like everything else in her life it's and, fine <laughs> it might work out Oh, uh, I mean, it definitely is not going to work out with the Sphinx. Just like, uh, so the Sphinx told them that you know they need to go back to their timeline uh, for fear of some planar entity trying to put things back in their lawful order, and uh, said that they could help them with that, and uh, then. Nihilus made a terrible perception roll, and his sister Annalyn made a great perception roll, and she ran up to him and uh, was very emotional and crying, very happy to see him. He had a very nicely <laughs> crocheted head covering on, and she was missing all but three fingers. Ugh. Um, so that's where we, <laughs> that's where we left off. I just, I'm just realizing <laughs> that I'm going to have to role play this, uh, emotional, <laughs> emotionally poignant moment with like, I'm, I'm relatively sure I have a fever at this point in my head. Is no. So <laughs> let's fucking do this. Uh, Get into your character, Jake. That's the answer. Is like your character has a fever now too, so yeah. it's fine. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's already <laughs> missing three fingers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so your sister just ran up to you, and she, you guys embraced, and she was saying to you, like, "Why didn't you find me?" Um, <clears throat> I think that was all she. She just kept repeating. Is that correct, Nihilus? I think so. I don't know if we actually got down to the to the answers yet. <laughs> yeah, so she is she's very emotional and she's grown older. She's older than you remember and um uh Yeah, she just looks pretty haggard like she's gone through some shit. And she's just continues to ask you where why didn't you come find me? They usually you're the person that they send that who fixes things, who was blessed and stuff. While while they're talking, Sarah like sneaks up and like dabs some like foundation. <laughs> on <her face>. make, <laughs> make a perception check, Sarah. Okay. <laughs> uh, ooh, let's see, a three. <laughs> Wait, but I I think I add a bunch, but uh, yeah, I think I add a lot to perception. What is that? Uh, perception is wisdom. Yeah, I add seven, so ten. That is all you need. Uh, oh. So when you <laughs> when you do that, um, you know she's very focused on her brother. Uh, she's still kind of just like, what the hell is this Furbolg doing? Uh, but you see under the head covering, crocheted 
portion. There's not hair. It's just scalp, and it's not normal scalp. It's it's like very pink and very uh, scarred. Um, as as I like, I'm like trying to like adjust her covering, and then like I see it, and I'm like, oh, and I like put it back on, <laughs> like, try to hide it somewhere. Uh, and who's who? What are you doing? Why are you touching me? And just let let her do it because she knows what she's doing. <laughs> yeah, and just trying to help you. Um, you get a little bit of youth back in your color. It looks like you've been through some shit. <laughs> so just try to yeah. just try to help you out. Um, Prati offers her a little bit of Max's flask of perpetual gin. Uh, oh. She she takes it and and smells it, and she goes, "It's a it's." I, I normally would. It's just I maybe a little later after my brother has potentially disappointed me again. Uh, <gasps> hey, it's, oh, uh, it's fired. This it's, is exactly uh, my brother's... why you look the way you look right now. <laughs> okay, and right. you ran away from home, and yeah, they 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 sent me out to to find you. And unfortunately, I I had to do the time warp again, and we're here. You mean time did... warp? <laughs> My group of friends and myself, we somehow traveled through time. So I have been missing from your regular timeline for for twelve years, and so I'm sorry I couldn't find you. But you know what? I'm really pissed off because. You ran away. You ran away, and now you're blaming me. What happened to your fingers? There are too many questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> you want to do this here in front of them, or I? We yes. I need the whole world to see this. We're in a zone of truth. Like, yeah, it's a good so, place to do so it. So I want to remind everyone: like, uh, you can't lie, but you don't have to say anything. You can be evasive. But like, um, if somebody asked you, "Are you here?" Uh, and you said no, that would be a lie. But you could say, "Well, what, what is the meaning of here?" and shit like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, if anyone, if anyone asked me if my products are all organic, I'm like, "Oh, there's this stuff and things that it, it's good. It's good. Just don't ask." Like. <laughs> so, these two sphinxes, Ranos and Devamal, are, st- are still there, and they're kind of just like. At first, Devamal was a little annoyed that this, you know, uh, small Triton woman interrupted what she was doing. Uh, but now she's just kind of interested, and Ranos interrupts and goes, Hold on, hold on. Are you guys. Can I just get the names of everyone just so I know what's going on while this drama plays itself out? Let me get this straight. This is your sister. Annalyn, yes. Annalyn, your name is Nihilus. Yes. And your name is, points at uh, Aradia. Aradia Nightsong, hello. Okay. And points at Prati, and you're, what was it again? I don't remember if I asked it. Uh, I telepathically connect and say, prodding Rod. Oh, okay. Prati for short, if you like. And <laughs> if you're nasty. points at Sarah and asks. Sarah Sierra, and I had a business card. You can go to my website. On... You're lying. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's it's a web. It's a literal spider's web, and there's <laughs> so that's, that's my website. It's just a spider's web with some products I stick inside the web, and you can pick one. What out. is your name? Sarah Sierra. At this point, um... oh, am I lying? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I, oh I, I have an alias. I forgot. Um, but I, I can't lie. So my real name, I'd rather not say. Okay. I'm... Uh, just as long... this is my moment. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. I was like, like. 
<laughs> and Ranos goes, oh, sh- sh- you're right. Sorry. Uh, this is a giant sphinx that is incredibly intimidating, rippling muscles and could just destroy all of you and without thinking about it much. But he <laughs> kind of like goes, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so uh, Anna Lynn says, so you're, you time traveled. You knew I was jealous of you and your gift, and I went to go find someone that would teach it to me because I know there's people that can learn can learn magic. And so I found this woman uh, and near Innes, and her, her uh, name was Auntie Nanny, and... She That's suspicious right away. <laughs> well, she was very nice and she worked at an orphanage and in town in the Gid Ward. And I worked there for months and months and she began she taught me a few minor hand trips and uh made some really great bakery items and uh i started feeling not myself and she uh she uh revealed revealed herself to be not what she said she was and because i refused to do her bidding and the bidding of the other orphanages uh the managers of the orphanages the 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 people who run them they're horrible people she she uh locked me up and would come down i think just randomly and she would take a finger in her hand and would get about three inches from my face and chew on one of my fingers until it was gone and then she'd leave and then she'd come back down at another time point in time and do it again she wanted she (laughs) wanted me to you know feed these pastries to the orphans and I knew there was something wrong with the orphans when I got there because they were all really horrible kids and they would bully each other and hurt each other, not in a playful way. And there's no, it was just all very, a lot of animus between all the kids and it didn't seem to bother Auntie Nanny or the other orphanages uh, and their managers. Um, And eventually uh, scalped me before I was rescued, (sighs) where I was rescued by, by my knight in shining armor and saved my life. Who, who, okay. This is is a lot to process, and I may have come off very aggressive in the beginning, and I'm going to walk that back a little bit. Um, um, First of all, I can't imagine the pain you went through. Uh, Wow, you had eight fingers uh, chewed right off. Um, Seven. Seven. Oh, that's not too bad then. <laughs> <laughs> Seven. Seven. You're right. You're right. You do have three. I'm so sorry. Um, but that other one she is just left a little me bit of two a nub. pinkies. What am I supposed to do with two pinkies? <laughs> um, wow. Who uh, who rescued you? Uh, his his name, and she points over there. She points to the stocky. Um, stocky guy 
and she yells, Deuce, come over here. I want... I don't like this. I want, <laughs> I want you to meet my brother. And don't don't please don't bring him over here. And Deuce <laughs> Deuce trots over like <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. And he goes, Hey babe, uh so your brother, this is your brother? B- babe. Oh, no. And she goes <laughs> I remember I, you. I wish I, wish I didn't. I, I, I wish I didn't have the flu for this because uh, yeah, because it hurts my head to do these deuce things. Um, and and she goes, "Yes, this is my husband, Deuce Trick Nips." And we're we're getting this old right away. He's the guy. The hell you Does are. Does anybody remember? He's the guy from the thing that we were at. <laughs> And Deuce goes, Ex- excuse me, uh, what? Like, I've, I'm, I'm, you're referring We've to me? We've met. We've met before. We met a Am long I time crazy? ago. You had of a brother or something? I, I had a brother. I had, ooh. Mm. Oh, yes, and we all experienced a collective trauma where body bot- parts came out and tried to attack us. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. And he pauses... And he's, you could tell the wheels are turning in his head, and he shakes his head and, and says, No, I, I, I don't think that was me, but I may know why. Uh, <clears throat> what? I may know why you are confusing me, and I... So this is... You, this is a long story, babe. I'm sorry to interrupt your... <laughs> turns to Annalyn. I'm sorry to interrupt your reunion. No one is shocked. Uh, uh, it's very nice to meet you, brother. No, I'm mm-mm. so happy. No, we're not. <laughs> I'm so happy question. to have a brother. That. You don't. Have we're gonna one. be. We're gonna do best bros, and we're no, gonna we're like not. go to you know sports games no. and no, ooh, no, <laughs> definitely. And we're gonna like one. play poker. No. Mm-mm. Well, uh, and maybe that one. <laughs> and uh, Deuce goes, "Well, listen, I was, I was imprisoned by the Sidon ones for many, many uh, months, and before I was rescued, I was in this vat of water with. I could see in the next cell, my brother was next to me." When I was rescued, I found out from my father that uh, there was a simulacrum running around of of my brother and I, and so that might have been why you. T- I assume all all of you saw me. Is this the case? This was twelve years ago. I was. I was. Yes. I was. I was taken locked up and they made a sim- simulacrum of me and so um that may have been who you met okay and... i'm gonna divert this story a little bit and go back to my sister because i have questions it's good to meet you bro no um <laughs> uh and An- An- why didn't you just go home did you not just when would I have gone I thought I was do I was gonna help kids, I was gonna learn some magic. What's threatening about that? But after after your fingers were chewed off I was after locked you were up scalped and drugged and after you were her, rescued with her pastries. That, this is just like you. <laughs> after you were rescued, why didn't you just go home? So Oh, after I was rescued? Yeah. You had time to go get married to Deuce here. He saved me and we hit it off. He's a wonderful man. (laughs) Why are you still here? And they're like holding hands at this point. I don't like this at all. (laughs) And Ranos and Devamala in the the background are just kind of like, they're like, if they had popcorn, that would be just like, (laughs) <laughs> so so what'd you ask 
Did you sign like some kind of contract when he rescued you? Like why? Why? I love him. I'm in the zone of truth. I can't lie. I love him. That's gross. Um, Nihilus, I'm so sorry. I don't mean to interrupt this beautiful moment that you're having with your sister. But <laughs> I quick question. Why are you so angry at her? This is like a level of anger that is intense even for you. Thank you. Thank you. You okay? And I just don't understand. <laughs> Look at her; she looks like a defunct baby doll that, like, Sid from Toy Story has been playing with. And you, and the you classic, are yes. livid. Yes, and you are livid. So I was just curious why. <laughs> because I had to grow up with her, and I have so many conflicting feelings right now, and they're just all coming out very. Uh, aggressively and um i think my anger is very uh uh forthcoming on this one um anna lynn let's let's walk this back again um okay <laughs> i don't know how to not be angry with you right now Dave, are you at least do something to you, did <laughs> are you... <laughs> thank you over this i really need to know where <laughs> this emotion is coming from was she mean to you when you were younger what She's she's just always been a radio. I, I take a radio to the side. Aradia, she's just always <laughs> been this way. She's always been the irresponsible one. She's always been the one that I had to look after, even though she's older than I am. I've always had to be the one taking care of her. So <laughs> I'm just very in my emotions right now. Okay, all of this is clear. I understand now. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Annalyn, um, Hold on. What, what is your? I just want to yes. make clear. I think in your backstory, you you either didn't say she was younger or older, or you said she was younger. So I made her younger, FYI. Oh, okay. just by a little bit. Okay, okay. Um, she she was <laughs> she she's younger, but she's always been irresponsible. Okay, yeah. Radia, it's just it's it's super irresponsible to try to help orphans and then get tortured for two years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So while it's, while it's... Nihilus took Aradia aside, um uh uh Anna Lynn turns to Prady and Sarah and goes My brother, I, did something happen? He was always very harsh, but he didn't he always had some amount of compassion. He just seems to have lost it. He he might be hangry. We haven't eaten anything <laughs> since we started this event. <laughs> yeah. He was almost he was almost killed yeah. a few a few times on this quest. I mean well, maybe that's it. I, um, I did sell my soul too, but um Oh that's true. He sold his soul literally. So, uh, so uh, you come back to Anna I Lynn. come back. And I say, okay, Anna Lynn, I just had a little discussion with Aradia, and um, we're going to walk this back again. Uh, I'm going to try to be a little less aggressive and angry again. Uh, we're right, we're resetting. Are you okay? I'm okay now that now that I'm here and I'm I'm with the love of my life. <laughs> she didn't laugh. I'm laughing. She didn't. Laugh. She said it very seriously. <laughs> And we're sure he's not a Similac again, or a simi uh, simulation, or so whatever. Uh, <laughs> so what? Real. No, and and uh, Ranos pops, uh, pipes up and goes, "I, th he's not. Uh, we checked, so you're good there. He's not real, or no, he's not, he's not a, a simi simulacrum. Simulacrum. S i m u l a c r u m." Did, Thank you. Did, I don't have my notebook, so I will not be writing it down. But I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> does he? Uh, does he know what happened to Trey? Did he say that? Uh, my brother, my brother didn't didn't make it out of of the side in ones wherever the in the depths of the dungeon. So he he just didn't make it. Is there a Quattro or a Cinco? <laughs> and he goes, what? <laughs> Never mind. Your poor, names poor time. are numbers. Your names are numbers. <laughs> are they? Uh, too soon. And he, and he looks at Anna Lynn like, what? What? <laughs> and she goes, I don't know. Uh, he is dense. A dense man. <clears throat> he's, he's deuce. 
Okay, <laughs> Annalyn, have you at least attempted to go back home and tell our parents that you're okay? Well, I mean, as okay as you can be? No, I've been trying to what we think is a coven of hags that control the orphanages. That's trying... their word. Yeah, Don't use that. <laughs> They're horrible <laughs> monsters. They're horrible monsters, and uh, there are much worse terms, we, but whatever. So I was uh, just trying to be funny. I'm sorry. I forget. <laughs> keep forgetting you're not well. <laughs> yeah, could I was you, like, tortured. Could you write write a message on a fish and like send it home to your city of Triton? <laughs> Is that offensive? Is that, <laughs> Is that... I don't know. I, I don't know how Merfolk so I maybe it's faster, but maybe that's Merfolk. Uh, Are you not a Merfolk? You're a Triton. We're Tritons, and I'm uh, so sorry. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to generalize. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're you're putting us in a box, and I don't oh, like that, okay. Sarah. So I'm Pratty. sorry. I put I put you in the ocean. That's where I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Brady does an impression of a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Oh my gosh, that was great. That's actually pretty good. Uh, so okay, I'm conflicted because we are here to uh, to help out this island, um, and now you're saying that we potentially have to go help out these. Orphans. Well, if you're if you're from uh, the a different timeline or whatever, then and you can get, I don't know if the Sphinx or or Suha, one of the um, watchers of the city. Uh, I don't know if either one of them can send you back. But if you can go back, then you can prevent, you can stop all of this from happening and and save. And rescue me, and you can. Would, would save this a lot be of like kids. a paid mission, like a venture? venture? <laughs> this... I'm sure. Uh... We we have been discussing with uh with Dave over there about traveling back to kill the other one. So I I'm guess. Just... I don't know how you feel about true love, but this will also mean that you never meet Deuce. Oh. I didn't think about we're gonna that. go back in time and we are gonna <laughs> we are gonna help you and then my dear dear sister. And she she like gets real quiet and emotional and and looks at at uh Deuce quite longingly and sad and just um he strokes her her face. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and uh babe if it meant you weren't tortured maybe we'll meet in a different way but like that is definitely <laughs> a possibility that will not be prevented <laughs> see Bro here gets it. Nope. Like, I'm gonna. And he turns to you and he goes, "That's actually you know, a brother, very offensive term, brother." In, I'm gonna um, primordial. I'm. I'm. <laughs> I'm. I will miss if this does happen. I will miss not being able to do bro things with you. So <sighs> we never did bro things. I know, but the potential, miss. dude. The, come on. You won't remember it. Um, okay, I think this is settled. Right? <laughs> right, group? Right? What does yeah. everyone else have to say? <laughs> I mean, I already wanted to go back, so it's fine. It's the only way I can see the person that I'm destined to marry. No offense to my lot. We could also get married, but you don't seem into it. <laughs> <laughs> and she just shakes her head. Hey, Dave, I think you're breathing into your mic. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, can it? It just sounds like the. Can you guys rumble your ears? I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that. Rumble your ears. Yeah, there's like a a little tiny muscle in your ear that. Oh no. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that. Yeah. Is that a thing? 
Yeah. Yeah. Where There's it's a whole like you subreddit can devoted for not... to it. Is this the thing that not everyone can do? Am I special? Is something exciting <laughs> happening that I've now equipped myself with? That's correct. That's correct. You should Catherine. put it on your CV. I can do it. And there's a whole subreddit devoted to it. When I found the subreddit, I felt like I found my people. It was amazing. I'm also double jointed. I don't know if you can see this. No, you're we frozen. Can. You're frozen on the screen. Ugh. Yeah. Right, never mind. Well, you're forget frozen. about it. Uh, <laughs> So, Richard, I'll show you later in person. It's, it's gonna unfreeze and you're like hanging from the ceiling all in like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um and it's at that point you, you hear a whoosh and a land and you see this brilliant silver mithril dragon, steel dragon land, and then immediately just disappear and turn into a dwarf and she's walking towards you in the distance. And in, in dwarf form, she s- still has a silver appearance. Is it um, Everwatcher? Yes, it is. It's Suha. Mm. Um, it's what you would assume. And her skin is inlaid with um, very polished. Uh, it's almost like... It's, almost, it's just the most brilliant silver type of plating... Um, you've ever seen, and she walks up to in between uh, Ranos and Devamala, and um, looks at them and goes, "What's what's going on here?" And they 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 uh, Ranos goes, "Oh, this is family reunion. Uh, these are a bunch of time travelers. We've checked them for you know lying and simulacrums and all that junk." Uh, by the way, this this um, this drow is insanely good at riddles. So I don't. In the few hundred years that I've been running riddles, it is probably top ten. Uh, <laughs> Let's not try to hype me up too much. I don't do well under pressure. Okay. <laughs> um. So Suha comes up to you guys and introduces herself as the Everwatcher of Innis, and um, says, well, yes, this is very... We have to send you back, otherwise... Otherwise, a... Who knows? Something from Mechanis will come and essentially destroy you, because you guys are out of your time, so... Yeah, uh, unfortunately... Wait, were you guys okay with going back? You're going back yes. regardless. But... Yes. Yeah, I have a quick question. Yes. Yeah, so if we go yeah. back, does that mean that I never signed my soul away? Um no, because this is an oh. interplanar uh contract, so Okay, that's okay. I, I made my peace with it anyway. <laughs> but uh she does tell you that I would say no, but if you do ever you know, if you continue your adventuring career and you ever find yourself, I don't know how you do, you find yourself on the plane of Mechanis or, or you can ask someone there who maybe uh, would inform you better, but I would guess no on that. That's okay. All right. Uh, you guys... Don't forget, everyone, you have um, things that you might need answered or items that to be identified. Oh, yeah. Uh, I walk up to people and I just, like, ask them, like, what is this? And, like, <laughs> uh, Suha just says, oh, yeah, uh, I'll take a look for you. And um, cool. she casts Identify... And I hopefully one of you is writing. Gonna write this down. Yeah, I'm trying to find my notes where I put that. I truly don't have my notebook, so if somebody else can write them down, I will be forever grateful. Um, let's see. Okay, here. Um, yeah, I got a velvet patch of five metal silver snakes bent into a C shape. Okay. And that cigar thing, right? 
We also want to know that. about that cigar. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's – yeah. Do you, I have the list. Do you want to read it off, or what are we – are we no, doing I'm just trying to pull up the, uh, the my notes on that, so just give me one sec. <clears throat> vamping, vamping, vamping. We're vamping right now. What is the origin of vamping? Vampire. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. I was thinking that oh. like to vamp in general it is like a 1920s term, right? Like, so it's like vamping is like maybe it is looking like a vampire. I don't know. <laughs> you sent me on a mission. I'll now find the etymology. Okay. What a good way to vamp is to figure out where vamping came from. It's almost like vamping. I planned all of this. I didn't. I was just asking a general question. Um, Okay, so the five tiny message snakes, they're message snakes, so when attuned to the oh. snakes, uh, they animate and form themselves into uh, the helix, the scapha, and the fossa of the ear, which are all, you know how there's nooks and crannies in your ear? Uh, yeah. So they just kind of form in there, and then uh, it allows the wearer to send and receive message, message spells to a distance of 500 feet passively receives the messages but it must be activated to send messages so you'd have to use an action okay so what does like that mean that so means i put these like snakes in my ear and then you like put one snake like, and if you give the okay. snake to a, another person they're all attuned to each other <clears throat> and oh it so does... it's like like walkie talkies yes Okay, and is it like unlimited um, use? We just have to it's unlimited it? use, but it requires one of your attunement slots, and um, so essentially it allows you guys to communicate in a distance of 500 feet, um, which can come in very handy. Yeah, when we go on our spy missions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the... What else did I you guys... I walked up and I just like started putting snakes in people's ears. <laughs> <laughs> You're not even going to tell them? <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, get out of there! Stop it! Oh, I'm sending you a message. Uh, uh, the cigar. I know we also wanted to know what the cigar was about. Uh, Suha does her thing when smoked. Has a chance to give a plus two or minus two to charisma checks, depending on who you're talking to. So it ca and it causes disadvantage on constitution ch checks because you're smoking. Uh, but essentially it works like if somebody thinks it looks cool to smoke cigars, you have advantage <laughs> on charisma checks. If somebody thinks you look like an idiot, then it's minus two to charisma check. Um, what else did you guys want? Um, the the tome uh Foxer, Faxer's tome? Yeah, so leather, it's leather bound, only, you can only use it once. <clears throat> if set on the top of another book, it will transform into the exact copy of that book. From that point on, any adjustments made to either book will re be reflected in the other. Oh, okay, okay. Radia um, has that. Yes. And then, um, there was a, uh, a ring of two bands, so Ooh. gold... Uh, what is it? Gold and one was granite, I think. Laughing yeah. faces, stony silence. Yeah, so that's it's. Uh, she says it's the ring of quiptical hits. Two. Uh, so essentially, it's um, two laughing faces, and uh, there's motifs of faces on the ring, and the rings reward witty uh, japes. Um, but punishes those that fall flat. So once <laughs> per day on a successful attack roll, if the wearer can deliver a one-liner quip or appropriate pun before rolling damage, the attack is converted into a critical hit. However... I if... think that should... Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Would... Uh, however, if the jape is deemed to have fallen flat, the wearer is overcome with lethargy and behaves as if affected by the spell slow until the end of its next turn. I think that should go to Sarah. I think okay. Sarah's got the one-liners down. <laughs> Let's hope. <laughs> no pressure. I mean, yeah, if you don't... 
Um, I'll take them. Yeah, yeah, I'll try. Yeah, yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah, so that's the ring. It's up to you guys what you do with all this stuff, as I've said before. Um, didn't you have a stone Aradia? Yeah, was... but didn't we? I think we found out what that did, didn't we? That it, like, uh, it yeah. is sort of an elixir Yes. I think I just told you what it did without, because I didn't want to uh, not tell you. Because uh, I was being persnickety about not knowing what it so was. She, so she tells you it's an iron stone of sustenance. Doesn't when you use it, it uh, I believe it requires an attunement slot. But when you use it, it floats around your head, and you don't need to eat or drink. Um, while you, while you're attuned to it. So that's that one, and if that's all, I believe the bathtub, you yep. didn't know either, but so she'll tell you what that does, but you already know what it does. Suha, you're amazing. Oh, thank you. I just, you know, being a dragon, mm -hmm. hyper-intelligent and all that. Uh, so... I think that's... Oh, speaking of intelligence, just randomly for no reason, I happen to find out what the word vamp means if anyone's interested. <laughs> Suha goes, I don't know what that means. I've always wondered. Well, um, <laughs> so fun fact, it actually comes from um, a, the like etymology is Anglo-Norman and it um, has to do with shoes, which is pretty interesting. Um, so it can mean a couple of different things. One is that in musical theater, it's um, the idea to improvise, right? So that makes sense of like when you're vamping, you're improvising. But the other thing that I thought was interesting is before it meant that, it's like in a shoe, you sort of cobble things together, a, a shoe part to sort of cobble things together. And so it's like an improvised shoe. And that's how vamping came up. I just thought that was interesting. That is for no reason. That is a crazy. Uh, it's crazy that that term has survived that long, and it's so specific. Yes, uh, it can also mean a slutty woman. So that's. Fun. Ooh yes. <laughs> I've that's never new, heard girl. that. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay. So, anybody? Do you guys have any? Uh, by the way, when Suha walked in and behind her, you guys probably wouldn't have noticed because freaking dragon uh but uh behind her there was some shark people and nihilus and annalyn would know what they are uh normally nihilus you might be on edge about seeing them your sister wasn't uh but they look like and you'd have to be on stream but you guys can look uh, i can send you the picture after the stream um of a salachian salachian I just imagine that it looks like the guy from Harry Potter when he turns into a shark. Accurate? I, I, kind of. Crumb? Crumb? Are you talking about Crumb? Yeah, Crumb. Kind of. Uh, okay. Ooh, they're nice meaty boys. Oh. <laughs> Can you call everything a meaty boy from now on? <laughs> <laughs> Only if they're meaty. <laughs> Okay, so that's that. Um, and if you guys have any questions for these three beings that are know a lot of shit, um, now's the time to do it, or... I do have a question before we go anywhere else. I met the love of my life twice, but I'm talking about the first time. What can you tell me about him? He's a drifter. He looks like a delicious mummy. Right, uh, it's an eonic drifter, um, and I think. Will Ranos, I ever see him again? Ranos, my Ranos or Dave Amal, I think last episode might have mentioned this, uh, but uh, Suha will say, um, so they are emissaries lost in time for some sort of civilization on this plane or another. That, right, I thought that was very romantic. Uh, essentially sent out to find help for their to save their civilization, got lost, and the time is multiple events of time traveling has has ravaged their mind to some extent, uh, and 
I can't see if somebody posted something in Discord. I can't see it because it'll mess up the stream. So Dave's allowed to stay longer than he thought he was going to before. Okay. Well, I got about thirty minutes left in me. Um, Great. Uh, where was I? Um, well, I guess what I'm wondering is, on a scale from one to ten, how likely is it that we will fall madly in love soon? Soon. About about, about the well. The chances of meeting him again are about the same as it was to meet him in the first place, so not very likely. And then the chances of him having any concept of of coupling uh, at this point, usually they're very single-minded. About so saving. you're saying there's you're a saying shot. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I, exactly. That's Sarah, what I'm hearing. Sarah, Sarah looks into a cootie catcher and like, <laughs> like oh. uh, very unlikely. Oh, those her are, story checks th out. Those are called cootie catchers. <laughs> yeah. I know yeah, exactly yeah, what you're talking. I didn't know that they were called that. About that yeah. I, I was writing a I was writing a TV script where we used one of those and I had to Google it. But yeah, I think that's one of the terms. There's a couple names. Isn't if so? If I'm just, I want to ask, um, uh, Aradia, if if it, meeting someone is highly likely, doesn't that take the romantic part out of it? Yes, I agree. I'm fine to wait and pine and maybe <laughs> fall in love with other people in the meantime. It's fine yeah, it's, for me. It's like fall sleepless in, in Seattle. Yes. The more <laughs> unlikely the encounter, the 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 hotter it is. Yes, the more special. I mean, it really speaks to why we were fated for each other in the first <laughs> place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but also, I feel that it's very important for me to be clear that I am not boy crazy or girl crazy. That I just, you know, I've spent a long time alone. <laughs> I have new friends. I'm learning about relationships. I'm interested in exploring my journey together with a partner. But I do care about who that partner is. So I don't want to pretend like it's just like anyone <laughs> willy nilly. I have a real thought process about the type of, of creatures that I'm interested in. So I just wanted creatures. to be clear about that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of the term um, creature sexual, but that is <laughs> kind of where I am. Like as long as it breathes, there's a chance with me, but not. <laughs> But just like in general, as far as like my expended mind. <laughs> and right so like at that very, moment, yeah, a Salatian very, very... walks by and hears you say that and turns to you and looks. <laughs> no, not you. Go on. It so, doesn't mean everything. So I'm anything... not interested in love triangles. <laughs> so anything that breathes, so like uh, just a comfortable pair of shoes or a comfortable shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dave should have the ring of cryptical hits. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm open. Uh, so is that all the questions you guys have? There has to be more pertinent things. What is God? Uh, Ooh, there's a good lot one. God. Uh, <laughs> the erasure is happened because a god died. I oh. I did we know that? Hold on, did wait. You guys what? didn't know that. <laughs> you guys that didn't was know like that. new information. That is <laughs> Prady, <laughs> Prady points to his arms and goes like, "A god fucking took my wings, guys." Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I, and a god bless nihilist. Yes, I we love, are well versed in God. I love. Picturing Brody doing that action, and in all of your minds, it's like, "What the? You guys fucking <laughs> took my wings! Took our wings!" Just, I love picturing that. Uh, so Which yeah, god died? Ayun, and Ayun. That, that's a big deal and to you, have Aradia, because she yes. is the goddess of knowledge, and of not just knowledge, but of free knowledge, and that everyone should have access to all the knowledge if they so choose and there are gods what? that are knowledge gods for lack of a better term that my fevered brain can't come up with 
uh, but they want to keep it secret because they don't think lesser beings can handle it. Did they kill her? We don't know what happened, but we suspect. A hold on, hold on. Patriarchy! A, a <laughs> demigod or one of. We don't know, but we just. Aradia's, Aradia's eyes are tearing up, and um, she stops and she goes, So, Ayun is dead. She's gone forever. She's gone forever, unless I can't imagine a circumstance in which she'd be able to be brought back. But, uh, and this is a big deal to a Cobalt Soul member because you're a monk, which is, uh, you're in a religious order, kind of, but your religion is knowledge and books and things like that. And so you're about, that's like, it's it's essentially like losing your parent or something. Um, I feel like you're directing her in a scene, and like she knows her Oscar moment where she's like, <laughs> "No backstory." I didn't mean it that way. I was doing it no, because no. she doesn't have the information uh, that a radio would know because she is a part of this organization. Um, uh, so I w didn't mean to. Uh, direct you in any way if that's it's how... fine i'm an actor i'm fine with being directed i'm not afraid <laughs> okay so yeah and um uh ronos pipes up at this point and goes zone of truth is off by the way at this point oh good <laughs> okay so was that a fucking lie was that real su <laughs> su <laughs> <laughs> So, uh looks at you and goes, no, unfortunately, I would never joke like that. Okay, you said no, and so in my brain at first, just so you know the thought process, I said, no, that wasn't true, and then I had a moment of hope, and then you took it away again. So I just want to be clear about what you are doing to me. She made it, she made it very clear, uh, despite the DM's ineptitude right now, because he's got a bad headache and feels shitty, uh, that she wasn't joking and that Ayun is dead and then that's what caused all most all of the writing and knowledge and books to be erased and some people's minds and memories to be erased um yeah i i know we are going back in the hopes of stopping um Nihilus's sister from marrying this horrible horrible man <laughs> But hey, and there... Annalyn pipes up too and goes, excuse me, he's... It's secondary, secondary, sorry. So, but I was also curious, is there a way for us to go back far enough to stop Ayun from being killed? I would if I could, and uh, I don't know how he was killed, nor do I think it's possible. There are fixed points in time, and... Uh... Uh, just, just like Doctor Who. You know? <laughs> <I know. laughs> uh, that's so good. Uh, because that's exactly what I was pulling it from. Uh, and We all thought it. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Any time-related questions that I don't have uh, answers for, I'm just going to go timey-wimey. You know, just... Perfect. Perfect. Uh, so, yeah, even if... Even if we were, we went back, where would we, how would, we don't know where she is, or who or what, or when, she, like, she could have she been killed. Me, Go ahead. She gave me everything in my life. It feels like we should just try to do something to help her. She's gone, let it go, girl. <laughs> and Suha. You are, you are hangry. Somebody give me the <laughs> give you the stone of Ayun so you don't have to eat and so you can be a fucking person for a second. <laughs> he is pretty monstrous. Uh, uh, Suha goes, you can honor her, her memory by just passing on your knowledge and encouraging others as I'm sure you have as a member of the Cobalt or what 
was the Cobalt Soul. Oh, that's fucking sad too. <laughs> Let's just go back. Let's go back. We have to fix this. Pratty goes, Pratty goes, uh, I can find her. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. I'm going to, I'm a Cracker Jack uh, investigator slash tracker and I'm bored. Uh, I need something to do. <laughs> hey, hey, Dave, do you want to ask anyone about your rod or what? Yeah, well, I, I wanted to ask about the, the brass broken rod. Uh, when you hand it over to her, uh, she takes it and she's a little bit confused. She looks at it closer and brings it closer to her face and she's examining it and then she casts Identify and she is shocked and... Um, please don't get any dragon drool on it, please. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she says, well, it would probably melt you anyway. Um, so... This is a, uh, she says, this is one of the shards of the, um, fuck, where are my notes? Uh, rod of seven parts. Uh, this is a part of a very very powerful artifact. Uh, Do you recommend I melt it down and combine it with my current rod? I don't <laughs> think you could. But with your saliva? I don't think it could. No? Could he duct tape it on the end of his current rod? and just? So it's not it brass. <laughs> it's... It's... Uh, it's brass. It's... It looks brass. It's made to look like brass, but it is not brass. Hmm. Is it a special vibrating material? Oh. Uh, I don't know what you're <laughs> intimating there, but... Uh, ah, forget it. Uh, <laughs> no, it's... Uh, <laughs> if I vibrate him. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, so she's just like... She gives it back to you and says, be very careful with that. There are plenty of people that would kill you without a thought to have that shard. Wow. And well, also, be careful. Plenty of people have not given a shit about me before, so... <laughs> well, I promise you, if they find out you have that, they'll give all the shits. Uh, um, and also... Does it help me to know which of the seven it is, or? In my memory, I remember reading about the Rod of Seven Parts, and if you put them together in the wrong order, it will cause them to be cast to different parts of the world instantly, out of your possession. Wow. Yeah. Kind of like Dragon Ball Z or um, funny, fun, is <laughs> funnily enough, uh, this is a artifact from the 70s. So um, this is a Gygaxian art artifact. So, um, nice. I wonder if Dragon Ball Z copied that from Gygax. Um, mm. I don't watch Dragon Ball Z, nor have I, um, but I'm curious now. Dragon Ball Z for life. Um, okay. And, uh, yeah, she, she tells you, like, unfortunately, that's obvi obviously going to be harder to find information now that we're, you know, there's not a lot of books and stuff. Uh, but, you know, just be careful and, um, hopefully you have a lot of good friends that can help protect you. Uh, and Dave Amala pipes up and says, I can take you guys back right now, if you'd like. I would, I would like to just say goodbye to my sister. We need to go have a tender moment. Everything was very <laughs> heated on my end. and <laughs> I can't wait to 
listen to the beginning part of that conversation because it was so harsh. Um, Aradia passes him a piece of bread before he goes. Okay. I, I chomp it down. Uh, um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, Annalyn, we're going to go and help you. So I just want to make sure that I get this correctly so I can um, uh, uh, punish the correct person who ate all your fingers. Uh, Auntie Nanny in Innis, in an orphanage in Innis, right? Yes. It, uh, let me get to the... Yes, it's called um, the Sugar Plum House. Sugar Plum House. And then she, she, she mentions she thinks there's two men in charge of a couple other orphanages that she suspects are part of the coven of hags and are hags themselves. Uh, their names are Versen Stonov, Stonov, S T O N O V, and Livio, L I V I O, Stitsk, S T I T S K. And Versen Stonov is um, head of the Cradle of Mercy Orphanage, Orphan, Orphanage, and um, Livio Stitsk is ahead of the Little Petals home. And she says there are other smaller orphanages, but those are the three main orphanages of the Gid Ward and Can you can you tell us anything about them as far as like their weaknesses or anything like that? Did you learn anything that might help us take they them down? They seem to be they have a lot of debts owed to them by other people, but they seem to be in a debt to someone that she doesn't know, but she heard Auntie Nanny talking about that, complaining about this entity or person that has their has them by the throat in terms of um, just deals made and such. Uh, but ha uh, hags are essentially, she, she tells you that she was very conniving and cunning, very smart, and they she played on the, the, her outer appearance, which is that of a very nice older lady. Uh, unassuming and plays on people's assumptions of that as well as poisoning and um they're they're hags so um mm -hmm. i've heard stories of just yeah they're not unlike witches okay okay we've got one of those um yep. all mm -hmm. right so okay well this has been real um it's about to be not real for you so um what a fucking dick this this, this <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I just mean like you we're gonna we're gonna go back and make your life better uh, okay. we're you gonna get rid of the torture you don't know that we're, you're gonna erase us we might just this timeline might just keep going and deuce and i can have kids and you oh. can be an uncle <laughs> and uh i don't think i can come back to this time Annalyn, so um, I'm. Oh, oh boy, I you, hope you, you just live. wait ten years, right? <laughs> I, I hope you live a beautiful life uh, with Deuce, and um, <laughs> yeah, I, I awkwardly extend my hands for a hug, and she uh, hugs you and says she loves you. I pat you. her head. Oof. Can she put her her lack of fingers on his face like? Four <laughs> she goes. She goes. Uh, I. It was the pinky and the thumb. She goes like. Yeah. This uh -huh. And then and then she has one pinky, so it's like yeah. Uh, uh, um. Okay. I'll see you when you look better. <laughs> yep. And so you go back and. Um, Deva Mala informs you of she's going to take you back 
to the same time 12 years ago, but you're going to be on the Isle of Inn. And she says it should be a lot more busy than it is now, considering we're under siege. So, uh, you're going to be in a party atmosphere because that's what the Isle of Inn is. Can I just tell you that you smell amazing? <laughs> it's just natural. I don't know. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Can you, can you give us a blessing before we go? Ooh, um, I like to be blessed. Let me look and see. That's me saying it, not her. <laughs> you know, you never know if you don't ask. Good job, Miles. I, I know, I know. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm blessed myself, so mm -hmm. it's always in the back of my mind. Mm. You get a blessing, and you get a blessing, and you mm -hmm. get a blessing. She says, oh, unfortunately, I cannot do that, but... Um, huh. Was it me? Did I do something? <laughs> no, I just don't have that capability. Oh. Oh, well. You're still impressive. amazing, just so you know. You're still amazing. You know what was <laughs> impressive, though, was how horrible you were to your sister who was maimed and tortured. There, there's a lot of emotions... <laughs> Why doesn't anyone ever think about me and what I'm going through? I think Nihilus no, is a no. narcissist. <laughs> uh, so she, um, she gets you guys together and um, boom, snap of a finger, you're back and it would be a lot more flowery if uh, my head wasn't pounding again, so uh, you're back to the ta to the uh, Isle of Inn in the correct time, and the, this you're in the same area. It looks a lot more lit up when you when you uh, come back to that time. Your eyes have to adjust; it's so bright, um, and there's plenty of magic uh, um, illusion and, and such going on on the streets and uh mm -hmm. those tubes i described earlier are brighter and more uh vivid in in their display of of pyrotechnics i don't know what word i'm looking for um and uh yeah you guys are in front of a, a blinking sign that says Oh, there we go. It says... Uh, furrows and fucks. And, uh... And fucks? F-U-X. Furrows, N, apostrophe, fucks. And uh -huh. what you've heard about the Isle of N, this may be one of those Brotava temples. Uh, and then to your left... Or just down the street, you see Peacing Key, a sign for the Peacing Keen Key, excuse me, and uh, down further you see one for the Guttered Gurn, and another one uh, on the opposite side um, of the street is Annoying Leg Ale House. And that's what you see right now, and there's People are startled, and especially to see a sphinx. And oh, uh, get back with us. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, Aradia! I think it's serious. And, <laughs> and she says, "Well, good luck, and remember what I asked of you." Oh. Uh, I can see my notes somewhere. <laughs> uh, and then she goes, she disappears. And that's that. Uh, it was so close. It was so close to happening. You guys know how much she wanted this. She wanted to jump on this badge. Let's uh -huh. be honest. Uh, She's such a vamp. Yeah. Yeah. So, and... I see you, Richard. I see you. <laughs> and I think that's where we're going to leave it. And we'll start there next week.
when I feel better. So oh. thank you for joining us, episode 10, and I look forward to episode 20 when I'm sick again. And uh, I can, what did we say, VDM? I'm a VDM. Mm-hmm. VDM. Mm-hmm. Vaginal and, dynamite. I'll yeah. never forget. I, I didn't say that. I said viral <laughs> dungeon master. And I said vaginal dynamite, and that's what I'm sticking to. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much for watching, and like, subscribe, all that stuff. Follow all of us. Thank you so much. All right, bye.